Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending wherever you are in the world and what time of day it is uh, that you are watching this, this lecture. Uh, a very warm welcome to, to all of you. Uh, my name is Brian Oldenburg. I'm a, a professor of non-communicable diseases and implementation science at the Baker Heart and Diabetes Institute and La Trobe University here in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And I was previously at uh, University of Melbourne for, for a number of, of years. This diagram shows the conceptual map uh, for this fundamentals program for this um, implementation science school. And of course, we are at the very beginning of this of this school. Module one, of which this is the first lecture, focuses on our understanding implementation as a science. And there are three lectures in this first module. The first one looks at key concepts, ideas and issues. The next one will tease apart the differences between evidence-based interventions and implementation strategies. And the third one, the last lecture in this module, will explore the transdisciplinary nature of implementation science and also discuss uh, some some examples. This lecture is going to focus on understanding the no do gap in healthcare, exploring how implementation as a science can help to bridge the no do no do gap, and thirdly, compare implementation science with efficacy and effectiveness research, which some of you will probably already be quite familiar with the latter kind of research, and it would also define the characteristics and core components of implementation research. Now, this image is from a, a UK television show called The Great British Bake Off. And in this show, each episode, a group of amateur bakers are all given the same recipe, ingredients and kitchen equipment, and they compete to make the best cakes as decided by the judges. You would think that if they are all given the same instructions, they should produce an identical, identical cake. And when everybody has the same skills, exactly the same instructions, the same background, the same equipment, the same time support, you, you could get very similar results. However, when these factors or variables change, the outcome, the cake, will be different. But the home bakers, uh, they may interpret the instructions differently. They may not speak the same language that the instructions are given in. They may have access to different equipment or maybe no equipment at all. They may use locally different ingredients. Or maybe they've never really done baking before or maybe they just don't care and they're not motivated to, to um, perform particularly well. But all these factors will interact and create huge variability in the outcome. This idea could be described as the no-do gap, a gap between existing knowledge on how to do something, but the knowledge is not applied to create the same outputs. And in the case of our bakers, simply having a recipe, that's the knowledge, is not sufficient to create a delicious and beautiful looking cake or not necessarily the same one by all. And there's a winding road between these two, these two things. And this no dap, no do gap has a parallel in healthcare. Imagine this, you know, we, we know how to cure, manage and prevent many different diseases and health conditions, including many non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease and, and so on. And there's many different evidence-based interventions for achieving these out outcomes. And these interventions may be programs, they may be policies, they may be principles, practices, products, or simply a, a pill or a medication. But somehow, 
as we know, a lot of this knowledge isn't translated into action and into healthcare, or certainly not healthcare that's provided to the majority of the people. So this difference between what we know and what we do is is often called the no do gap, and it's it's that very frustrating and important gap or chasm between what we know works and what actually happens in re real world healthcare delivery and population health, and it's why effective treatments programs and policies don't reach everybody who needs them and achieve the health outcomes that are achievable in all of our countries. And even worse, uh, in many instances, there's practices and procedures and policies being implemented, uh, which are not based on evidence at all, and in many cases are contrary to what the evidence suggests. And, and these practices and programs are often described as low value care. A very famous professor of public health and health promotion in the US, Professor Larry Green, many years ago, over 20 years ago, calculated that if you look at a lot of the evidence for public health programs and health promotion programs and prevention, it takes almost 20 years before that evidence, if it translates at all, translates into routine healthcare delivery and uh, policy. And, and clearly this is unacceptable practice in our, in our countries. Implementation science then focuses on advancing what works to what works, where and why. It seeks to bridge this no-do gap it focuses on bridging this gap by studying and understanding the factors that influence the uptake and sustained use of evidence-based intervention programs into real-world settings. Essentially, it, it, it confronts the challenge of translating research findings into practical action policies and, and procedures. And there's many, many examples of these implementation gaps which could and should be addressed by the implementation research that we can conduct. For example, inequitable access to essential medicines for NCDs. While generic medicines have reduced the costs incredibly of NCD treatment, access remains a, as a very significant challenge in many of our countries, as you know. High costs, supply chain disruptions, poor distribution systems, contribute to inadequate access to affordable and essential medications for NCD management. NCD services are often siloed and res this results in delayed diagnosis, suboptimal care and increased morbidity, morbidity, morbidity and mortality. So how can services be delivered and implemented in a more integrated fashion for patients to, to derive much better health outcomes. Low awareness of prevention and prevention efforts, even where people are aware, policymakers, of how prevention could be effective and strategies that might work for prevention, screening for cancers and so on. These are often underfunded and poorly implemented programs. A shortage of trained healthcare professionals, particularly in rural and underserved areas, really hampers the delivery of quality NCD care. This gap is exacerbated by the brain drain of skilled healthcare workers to high income countries. How could implementation research address some of these implementation challenges? And finally, inadequate data collection and analysis systems often hinder the, the identification of high risk people, populations, poorly monitoring disease trends and evaluating the impact of interventions. How can we uh, reduce this gap and implement better health information systems to achieve better health, better health outcomes?
So put very simply, or in very simple terms, the thing, if you like, is is the intervention, the practice, the innovation, or the the program. Efficacy and intervention, effectiveness and uh, efficacy research studies really understand whether the thing works. Implementation research looks at how best to help people and places do the thing or implement the thing that could make a difference and improve health outcomes. Implementation strategies are the things we need to actually do and how we do them to help people and the settings and the services to, to achieve better implementation. And implementation outcomes are how much and how well uh, we we do those those things and actually conduct the, the implementation. This diagram shows what's called the research pipeline from, from very basic science through to implementation science and research. Implementation science differs from intervention research like efficacy and effectiveness studies in that it focuses on the strategies that are used to implement evidence-based practices rather than just focusing on what works in, often or usually in very ideal conditions, which are very different from real-world conditions. Implementation science is not just new, same old, same old empirical research. It is the science, it is studying the science of implementation. And as a science, it systematically organizes and curates, builds on accumulated knowledge about a phenomenon in the world, which includes an existing body of knowledge in the implementation science literature. And in addition to undertaking new research about new strategies and new implementation, uh, there's also a need to improve the utilization and uptake of, of current implementation knowledge as well, including the application of existing frameworks, guidance, and tools. This slide summarizes the major differences between efficacy, effectiveness, and implementation research, bearing in mind that often there's also some overlap between these as well. So for example, with the research that my team has been conducting in southern India for the last 20 years related to improving uh, prevention and control of diabetes and hypertension, we've developed a program and the team in India have developed a program called the Kerala Diabetes Prevention Program. And the very first or one of the first studies we conducted related to that was a real world randomized implementation trial of the Kerala Diabetes Prevention Program. So implementation science also conducts or can conduct you know, randomized effectiveness trials as well. But nevertheless, uh, you may like to uh, pause the lecture at this point and read through the information in this table and understand the similarities and differences uh, between efficacy, effectiveness and implementation science. So coming towards the end of this introductory lecture, let, let me just summarize some of the defining characteristics of implementation research. We've already touched on this a number of times in this lecture. Context is really important to understand because without understanding context of uh, the citizens, the health consumers, patients, healthcare workers, decision makers, without understanding that context where people are living and working, it's not possible to design and develop implementation strategies which are going to be relevant and appropriate in that context and will have a possibility of sustainability and scalability over time. Agenda setting is, is very important. So the extent to which the implementation research question that you might develop is relevant to the agenda of health professionals, health decision makers, policy makers, what's important to them. 
The implementation research methods need to be fit for the question being asked and, and the purpose of, of the uh, project, need to be demand-driven, need to involve multiple stakeholders and to be multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary. This isn't the kind of research that can be done by one one individual. It, it, it takes many people and teams to, to undertake uh, good implementation research projects. Real world, real time, and focusing equally on process and outcomes. Typical research foci are uh, the, the aims to evaluate implementation strategy, the interventions often directed at uh, the behaviour of individuals and patients could be directed at the behaviour and the practices of clinicians and healthcare professionals or of organisations and settings or policy makers. So the level can vary between uh, the different strategies and what they're addressing. The implementation outcomes, they can address acceptability, adoption, appropriateness, feasibility, fidelity, reach cost, sustainability, all of these could be the, the focus of, of, of different implementation strategies and projects. And lastly, the unit of, of analysis, maybe it's focusing on the organisation, the whole of the setting or the facility, maybe it's focusing on the team or the behaviour of individuals and people or organisations in the, in the community. So just to summarise finally, core components of implementation research and science. There's many components and important concept, concepts to consider in an implementation science project, but four key components that are a good starting point include meaningful stakeholder engagement, using theories, models and frameworks, understanding context, and testing implementation strategies. These are all very important and we will go into more detail on each of those components as you move through uh, this fundamental fundamentals program over the, fu uh, over the rest of the program and the following lectures. So just to summarise, Key messages, evidence alone is insufficient to combat, combat NCDs. A, a significant gap exists between knowledge, action, and healthcare. Implementation science focuses on how to apply evidence-based interventions. Unlike efficacy and effectiveness research, implementation science actively considers the real-world environment when introducing new interventions and practices. And implementation science is not just new empirical research. It is, it is the science of uh, implementation. So thank you very much for watching this lecture and uh, I wish you all the best uh, with, this, with this school. Thank you very much.